1406 from the Shakta era, or 1485 by our calendar, in the month of Magh, that Krishna entered into the heart of Jagannath Mishra. And from the heart of Jagannath Mishra, Chaitanya Charitamrita explains, just as the light of the sun is transferred to illuminate the moon, from the heart of Jagannath Mishra, the Supreme Lord Krishna transferred to the heart of Sachi Devi. And from her heart, the Lord entered into her womb. From that time, Sachi Devi became so beautiful, so effulgent. And all these incredible things started happening. Jagannath Mishu would walk down the street and people would start giving him bananas and giving him rice patties and giving him all sorts of gifts of coconuts. And he told Sachi Devi, people are so generous. Everyone's giving me things. <laughs> And Sachi Devi said, well, sometimes I look up into the sky and in outer space I see these beautiful, ornamented, loving people offering prayers to the child in my womb. And Jagannath Mishra said, I see the same thing. And they came to the conclusion there's a special child that has come. It was Krishna. With the love of Sri Radha, the combined avatar of Radha and Krishna was within the womb of Sachi Devi. Thirteen months passed, and the child was not born. So Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi were becoming very, very concerned. After all, they already had eight children die. So they went to Nilambar Chakravarti and they asked him if, they, if he could do an astrological calculation of what's happening. I think children are usually born in nine months. <laughs> Is that correct? I don't remember personally that was... <laughs> Sixty-one years ago, I didn't. I, I, know, I don't think I was counting the months at that time. Anyway, <clears throat> thirteen months passed. Nothing. So Nilam Parachakravarti he did a calculation, and not only calculation, but by his own mystical power to see. Because you see, to be a good astrologer, it's not just a matter of calculation. Actually, the Lord within the heart, the Paramatma, has to give you the intelligence to really see what's there. Just like Srila Prabhupada would sometimes say, astrology is a perfect science but there aren't many good astrologers. To really understand it well, there has to be a, a deep intuitive power given by God himself. So Nilambar Chakravarti was really a supremely expert astrologer. And he said, this child is not an ordinary child. This child has the power to nourish the universe. This child is waiting for the most auspicious possible time to be born. And it will happen in this coming month. <clears throat> Interestingly, the Lord created the most auspicious situation during an inauspicious time. 
it was in the month of Palgun, in the year 1486, that there was a lunar eclipse on the full moon night. And during that lunar eclipse, people were so afraid that their material life and their material efforts would be contaminated by inauspiciousness. They wanted to somehow or other protect themselves from it. So they, all the Hindus, they went into the Ganges or into some other body of water and loudly cried out the names of Lord Hadi. Somebody told me traditionally in Bengal, so many people during life when they want materialistic things, they worship a demigod. But when there's really an emergency or a disaster of somebody's on the verge of death, <laughs> then they chant the names of Hadi. <laughs> so this is an emergency. This is an impending disaster. So they were loudly crying out the names Hadi Hadi. <laughs> and not only that, but Krishna, who is within the hearts of every living being, induced them all to really, really, sincerely, everybody was running to the Ganges to protect themselves from inauspiciousness. They all raised their arms very high and cried out the names, Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. And when the devotees saw this, Srivas Thakur looked at the other Vaishnavas and said, finally, they're chanting Hadi's names. <laughs> Let this eclipse last forever. <laughs> and Thakur Haridas and Adwaita Chaya, they saw everybody all around chanting the Hadi Hadi. <laughs> And they were dancing and singing together. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. And while all directions were filled with the chanting of the holy names, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, appeared from the womb of Mother Sachi Devi. symbolism of this is so instructive that Krishna is not different than his name. And the name of the Lord is the sound vibration that accesses the grace of the Lord and through that grace the Lord appears to us. Draupadi, she was in an aus inauspicious situation. Her chastity was about to be eclipsed. When she was in that assembly in the Kuru dynasty, Duryodhana had Dushasana drag her into the assembly by the hair and ordered him to strip her naked. most inauspicious thing that could possibly happen to her, worse than death, to be humiliated in this way by cruel, lusty men. It was a total rape of her character and her dignity. Absolute abuse. She turned to her husbands, but they were helpless. All they could do is look down to the ground in total shame. Because they had become the property of Duryodhana. She looked toward the throne. They just looked away from her. She looked toward all the people around, these great heroes and warriors. 
and either because they were intimidated, intimidated by fear or because they were depending on the favors of Duryodhana, they all looked down in shame. And Dushasana, he was staring at her with such lust and anger. He started to pull her sari. Draupadi, she looked at everybody around and chastised them severely. You are all cowards. You all have no character. How could you allow this to happen? But her words fell on deaf ears. And then Dushasana, whose arms had the strength of hundreds of elephants, pulled her sari. At that point, although she was trying to protect herself, she realized it was helpless. And when he took that final pull with all of his strength, she lifted her arms high in the air, like this. Everyone. <laughs> and she didn't, she wasn't half sleeping during her japa. <laughs> She wasn't thinking about, um, you know, this person said to me something then, and, I'm, and I have to, I'm hungry. Uh, or, uh, you know, I have an appointment in 10 minutes. Her arms were raised, and from the very core of her heart, she cried out in total dependence on the mercy of Krishna. She cried out, Hey Krishna! Hey Govinda! Hey Krishna! Hey Govinda! Hey Krishna! Krishna, who ordinarily does not <clears throat> involve himself in mundane activities in this material world. He lets his external energies take care of that. Because she called out his name with such humility, with such faith, with such absolute devotion, in such a sense of Sharanagati. Sharanagati is the very essence of Dharma. Sarva Dharma Pritya Sha Mame Kam Sharanambraja Aham Tvam Sarva Papi Vyamoksha Yisami Machucha. When Krishna says abandon all varieties of Dharma, he doesn't mean he should neglect them. What he means is, they are all meant for the purpose of going to the essence. And if you don't go to the essence, you've missed the whole point of all dharma. The essence is Sharanagati, to take shelter, to actually surrender. Surrender is to understand the urgency, the need. What does it mean to take shelter? That is a spirit. If there's a tiny little drizzle and you don't have an umbrella and you go under some roof, are you really taking shelter? It's a little drizzle, I'll go under. But if it's torrents and lightning and you run, you run for shelter, yes? <laughs> Or you're walking in a field and you see some ants, so you kind of step away from them. And then 
a cobra lifts his head, lifts his hood and looks you right in the eyes and his tongue is flittering in and out. He's going, <laughs> then you need shelter, yes? So Shadanagati means to really give your heart because you feel a need. To really seek shelter. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his book Shadanagati, he's so many beautiful songs. And in one he's explaining, my dear Lord, in the entire 14 worlds, there's no other shelter but your holy name. Yes, if with the same fixed focus on Krishna, Sri Krishna Sharanam Ram, Sri Padbalabhacharya gave this prayer. Krishna is my only shelter. Krishna is the supreme shelter from everything and anything that is inauspicious. And ultimately, Krishna's love is the shelter of happiness that we are all seeking. You see, Draupadi at that point, she was not praying Krishna, destroy Dushasana. She was practically, when she raised her arms and she cried out, hey Krishna, hey Govinda, her mood was, Krishna, I am yours. Krishna, if you want, you can kill me. If you like, you can protect me. I'm yours. I'm your servant. You can do anything and everything you want with me. Manaso deho geho jo kichu mo apilun tu apade nanda kishor. My body, my mind, my home, my family, all of my knowledge and abilities, everything belongs to you, Sri Nanda Nandana. I'm yours. Ashlisiva padara tampanashtrama madarashana marama dhatam kurotiva tathatatatom lampato matpurana natas tu se eva napara. Lord Chaitanya taught this. My Lord, if you want, you can embrace me. If you want, you can trample on me. Or if you want, you can make me broken hearted by not being present before me. Any way you want. I am your servant unconditionally. This is Shadarnagati. It was in this spirit. Draupadi had nothing else but Krishna. Tvayi ne nanya vishava matya madhu pate sukrit. Her mother-in-law, Kunti, was later to offer this prayer. As the Ganges forever flows to the sea without hindrance, let my attraction be forever drawn only to you, without being diverted to anything or anyone else. It was in this spirit that Draupadi raised her arms and cried out, Hey Krishna! Krishna was inducing all the people of Navadvip from within their hearts to be crying out Krishna's names. Sincerely. And it was at that most auspicious time, which was invoked by inauspiciousness, 
that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared within this world. On this day of Gaur Purnima, the most holy of all holy days, the day which invokes the greatest hope and the greatest opportunity in all of creation, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give the love of Sri Radha to the people of this world. Sri Chaitanya Charita Mita explains that Krishna was thinking that throughout the world I am worshipped as God, as the supreme, all-powerful controller of all controllers, as the omnipresent, omniscient, creator, maintainer, and destroyer of all existence. But nothing pleases my heart more than love that is not crippled by this reverential attitude. Love that is above and beyond that with the intimacy of the residents of Vrindavan. Yashoda Nai she loves me as a mother, and she will bind me up with a rope. And the gopas, they will wrestle with me, and they will make me carry, carry them on my shoulders to show the world that they defeated me. And the gopis, they will give me the highest pleasure by rebuking me with harsh words. Because it is, an, it is an expression of the most deep intimacy of love. Raghunath Das Goswami explains that Krishna said that even the most learned, pure-hearted Brahmins who chant prayers from the Vedas and Upanishads do not give Krishna as much pleasure is when the ladies of Vrindavan chastise him for his naughtiness. It's not that the love of Vrindavan is ignorance of God's supremacy. They have absolute full knowledge of God's supremacy. But beyond that highest liberated state, Yoga Maya, Yoga Maya puts their understanding of Krishna's supreme powerful position in the background and puts his sweetness, his beauty, his playfulness totally in the foreground. And therefore they could love him as a friend, as a, as a child, or as a lover. Lord Chaitanya, as Krishna, was thinking, I will descend into this world in the role of my own devotee, Sri Radha, to distribute her love everywhere. The love of the intimate sweetness of Vrindavan. That is the benediction that took place that takes place on this day of Gaur Purnima. When a little boy was born, the news spread, and Srivast Thakur, <coughs> his wife Malini, they were in, and Chandrasekhar and Malati, his wife, they all came to offer gifts and pujas and to perform kirtan for the pleasure of this little baby. And when they saw his beauty, they loved this child with the same exact love that they had for Krishna in their hearts, but they couldn't understand that he was Krishna. And interestingly, as soon as Lord Chaitanya was born, many miles away in Shantipur, Adwaitacharya, and Haridas Thakur, they felt a surge 
of ecstasy in their hearts. It wasn't like there was some flash news bulletin, the Lord is <laughs> born. Today you have on internets and on televisions these flash news bulletins that interrupt the show and say, you know, this just happened. <laughs> they didn't need those things. They were so in they were so tuned in to Krishna in their hearts. They got this flash ecstatic update. <laughs> The Supreme Lord had descended. The moment Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared from Sachi Devi's womb, Lord admitted our uh, Advaita Charya and Haridas Thakur felt so much love surging in their hearts, the fulfillment of all their prayers. They danced, they leapt in the air, they were weeping, they were crying, their hairs were standing on end, they were embracing each other madly in front of everybody. And nobody could understand, What's, what are they doing? <laughs> Here's a great Brahmin and an untouchable, and they're embracing, and they're crying, and they're falling on the ground, and they're rolling, and they're screaming, and they're jumping, and they're chanting the holy name. <laughs> understood what happened. <coughs> and the moment Lord Chaitanya appeared, Nityananda Balaramji, in ecstasy, roared. <laughs> Little boy, he was only about 12, 13 years old. He roared! And when he roared, the entire universe shook. <laughs> And people were wondering, what was that? <laughs> Everyone was celebrating in a special way as the Lord appeared. Sita Thakurani was sent by Adwaita to honor the child. Sita is Adwaita's wife. She came on a beautiful palaquin, carried all the way from Shantipur. And she brought gold, silver, jeweled ornaments. And she massaged his body with turmeric, turmeric and vermilion and other types, sandalwood and keshar and various auspicious ointments. She performed pujas. And she would probably explain what a beautiful culture that when a baby's born, so much auspiciousness. But it just shows how, how deep and sensitive the culture was in those, that time. And when Sita Thakurana was offering all of these blessings upon the child, she looked at him. And just like all the other ladies who were around her, they all had the same thought. He looks just like Gopal, identical to Krishna with a golden complexion. So Sita Thakurana gave him the name Gaur Hari, Lord Hari who has come in a golden complexion. And different people started giving Nimai different names because he was born under a moon tree And because the moon tree is very auspicious, Srila Prabhupada explains the extract of the neem leaves is of Ayurvedic cure for leprosy. It also repels mosquitoes. <laughs> It's good. Dr. Arlo could give us a whole lecture about the advantages of moon. It's good for the teeth also. But traditionally, ghosts and evil spirits 
are afraid and repelled by the name tree. And because eight children had already died of Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra, in order to protect this beautiful newborn child who was born under the name tree, Sachi Devi gave him the name Nimai. The neighboring ladies, Gorhadi. The child was born. And the little baby, like other babies, sometimes would cry. And because everybody loved this child so much, Miss Krishna. Pariksit Maharaj asked Shukadev Goswami, how is it possible? It's against human nature to love another person's child more than you love your own child. It's simply biologically illogical. <laughs> By illogical. It's by illogically illogical. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> but yet it describes in Krishna Lula, everybody loved Krishna more than their own children. And in the same way, in Navadweep, everybody, all the devotees, they loved Nimai more than they loved their own children. They loved Nimai more than they loved their homes. They loved, they loved Nimai more than they loved their own lives. Spontaneously, naturally, because he's, he's all attractive. He's the ultimate object of everyone's love. So to see the Lord crying, was worse than death. And to please the Lord was the most precious and pleasurable thing in all the both in, in, in life. So the child would cry and he wouldn't stop crying. He was pleased. His smile was more beaming than hundreds and millions of suns. When he looked at you with pleasure and smile, even though he was only a one or two day old baby. It filled your heart with ecstatic bliss. It was God smiling at you. God showing his pleasure. God beaming his love upon you. Then he would cry. And they would all come together and chant to make him smile. And this became the pastime of all the ladies. I guess the men, they had to go out and do their pujas and all their work, but ladies were very fortunate. They just waited for Lord Nimai. They just played with him, and as soon as he'd cry, they would all raise their arms blissfully and cry out Krishna's holy name. <laughs> From the moment of his birth, he induced everyone to chant. And as a little baby, he was giving people a preview of his mission of descending into this world. To, to inspire people to chant the names of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya offered this beautiful prayer, Nam Nam Akari Bahuta Nija Sarva Shaktish Tatrapi Nam Yamita Smarane Nakala That Krishna is fully present within the name. All of his powers, all of his sweetness, all of his love is within the name. Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasvikra Krishna is 
personally, fully present. It's not that Krishna's just in his name. Krishna is his name. Shabda Brahma. Krishna is personally incarnation through transcendental sound vibration. Goloka Premadana Hadinam Sankirtan. That the holy name is Krishna and Radha, Hare Krishna, that has descended in the form of this Maha Mantra from the spiritual world of Goloka into this world. Haridas Thakur asked Lord Chaitanya, what is, or actually it was asked by Har, it was asked to Haridas Thakur, what is the ultimate perfection one can achieve by chanting the holy names? Why do we chant? Haridas Thakur said, material benefits, mystic powers, and liberations are insignificant. The real benediction of chanting of the holy names is Krishna Prem. The highest liberation, ecstatic love for Krishna. The Lord descended to give that ecstatic love for Krishna through the chanting of the holy name. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami tells us that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came with a garland. He took Prema, ecstatic love of God, like flowers and strung it on the string of the holy name, Harinam. And he came to put this garland around the entire world. He came with his associates, the Panchatatta Tattva, to plunder the storehouse of ecstatic love of God and taste the sweetness of that love and distribute it profusely to everyone and anyone, whoever will accept it. And how are they profusely distributing it? Through a Harinam chanting of the Lord's name. Chakravarti performed the name-giving ceremony with the Lord and his relatives. And at that time, according to the calculations he did with the horoscope, he said, this child, this child, he has descended into this world to nourish the entire universe with love of God. Therefore, I give him the name Vishwambar. And at that time, one pilgrim Brahman happened to come into the room and he explained his vision and his calculation. That this child is going to inundate the world with the perfection of life. He went on and on with the beautiful characteristics of what Nimai would do for the future. But the one thing he didn't tell his parents, he went, went to a whole description of what Nimai was going, who, who he is, and what he's going to bestow upon humanity. But he didn't talk about how he was going to take sannyas because he didn't want to ruin the happiness of everyone. And Jagannath Misha, hearing these beautiful prophecies of his child, is honored and worshipped and gave so many gifts to this Brahmin. And they, during the name giving ceremony, they put money, grains, weapons, and all different types of paraphernalia that indicate a person's inclinations for the future. And little Nimai, 
They said, now me my, choose whatever you are most inclined for. And he did not look at anything else. There were all kinds of trinkets, toys, this, that, money, coins. You know, people like to, little kids like to play with coins. They don't know their value, but they like. <laughs> Nimai just crawled right to Srimad Bhagavatam and wrapped his arms around the Bhagavatam. And in great, great emotion, he embraced it. Everyone was very happy to see. He was the very personification of Srimad Bhagavatam. That was during the first grains that that was happening. And one day when Nimai was just still crawling around, enchanting everyone's hearts, he was in the courtyard of Sachi Mata's house, in a gigantic, extremely ferocious looking serpent happened to crawl into the yard. And right in front of everybody, a little Nimai grabbed the tail of the snake. <laughs> and suddenly the snake wrapped himself around Nimai's body. And then the snake made a coil, coiled up on the ground. And Nimai laid on top of him and smiled. <laughs> Sachi Devi, Jagarath Mishra, and all their relatives and friends, when they saw little Nimai, he was just a few months old, laying on the coils of this monstrous serpent. They were afraid to come too close because if they disturbed the snake, he might eat the child or bite the child or strangle the child. So they kept distance. They felt totally helpless. Now please understand that when we hear these pastimes, if we really want to get the effect, we have to enter the pastime. Not just like an observer. If you're a mother and father, if you had a little baby child that you love more than your own life, and that child, you happen to see him laying in the coils of a deadly snake, would you just be sitting in class smiling, thinking, oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's quite interesting. <laughs> What would your emotion be? <laughs> no, please understand. Me, me, me. Let, let him be your child for now. He's your child. And you love him infinitely more than you love any of your own children. Is that possible? Yes. Nimai is your child. You're Jagannath Mishra. Even Brahmacharis, you could play this. <laughs> No danger. <laughs> you're all Jagannath Mishas and Sachi Devis, and your own beloved little child, Nimai, you're seeing, and you don't know he's God. You know, now we're thinking, oh, he'll do you, and we already know the story. 